Hi, everybody. Welcome to Cooking with Gina. My name is Gina Virginia Casella. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel at Gina Virginia Casella. And I'd love for you to join my Facebook group, Present Moment Alchemy. And don't forget to pick up your copy of one or all of the books from my Dragon Dream series on Amazon.ca. You just visit Amazon.ca, type in Gina Virginia Casella, Dragon Dreams, and my books will pop up. You can get them in uh, the Kindle version as well. If you need the link, you can find it in the uh, main description. And okay, my microphone is on. So what am I doing? Uh, today, I just feel like um, some zucchinis and mushrooms. I know there's some in the fridge. So uh, I got a zucchini here I'm going to chop up. I've got some button mushrooms I'm just going to clean. And um, this tomato, it's not ripe, but I'm really craving tomatoes. And I thought this is a, a good firm tomato to bake. Um, I could fry this stuff, but I, I want to bake it today. And uh, I also found this some vegan feta cheese, right? It's by Dea. Never tried it before, so I'm really looking forward to this. And um, I, I might um, just kind of uh, put the feta cheese mixed in with these um, stuffed olives, their no-name brand, um, on the side. And um, I don't have any black olives, whatever, just working with what I have. And um, I also have um, a lot of head lettuce left over. So I thought um, maybe I could be fancy and use it as a wrap. Um, I also got some rice here on the side. Um, but I have a feeling <laughs> uh, I'll probably just chop up the lettuce and create like, a, 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 like I, I call it hot salad, but it's basically like a, um, instead of having a wrap, you just chop it up and toss it in the rice. So um, anyways, what else was I going to tell you? Um, oh, yeah, I'm craving white onion. Um, yesterday on Cooking with Gina, I made some white onion, non-onion rings because I quartered them. And uh, they were tasty. But for what it's worth, it left me just wanting and craving the white onion for what it is. Um, so I'm going to basically chop up my veggies, toss it in some oil and bake it. And I'm intentionally going to have, um, big chunks of the white onion. So, uh, I'm really excited. And, um, part of me also kind of feels like shish kebabs. Um, so I, I think that's why this meal is coming together like it is. Uh, who knows, it could transform like many other episodes of Cooking with Gina. Uh, but no matter what, I know it's going to be tasty. If you're wondering what I'm drinking, I'm drinking Tetley tea, uh, orange pico. And uh, I'm using, um, I'll show you, it's um, oat milk, Earth's Own. I always confuse the name brands, Earth's Own. Uh, and this one is unsweetened, which surprised me. I swore I got sweetened, but I don't know any different. Um, it's unsweetened and it says vanilla on it. Um, the last one that I bought, it was a different name brand and it was unsweetened and it was plain and it was okay, but it really wasn't cutting it as far as a cream to add to <clears throat> coffee or uh, tea, at least for myself personally. So I'm still trying to figure out the unsweetened sweetened, but I know for myself personally, it looks like it needs to say vanilla on there. <laughs> um, and I'm also still experimenting with like oat milk versus, um, you know, soy milk and, and whatnot. So anyways, this is uh, Earth's Own and uh, it's pretty tasty. So I don't know about you, but I just love rice. I'm cooking for myself today, cooking for one. I don't want leftovers. Uh, so I just have a little bit of rice in here and I'm like, is this going to be enough food? But the thing is... Um, I've got a whole zucchini here to eat and uh, I'm going to eat this whole tomato. I'm going to eat like half of this white onion. Um, I might eat this whole thing of feta cheese. Let's not kid ourselves. Right. And then um, <laughs> I also have the uh, white or the, um, the leafy uh, head lettuce here. So um, 
I know this is going to be too much food as is. I wonder if you can relate. Again, I'm just cooking for one. <laughs> um, there's some other things in the fridge I wanted to pull out, but I was like, no, I think this is enough, you know. And um, there were three zucchinis and I took the biggest one. <laughs> so the rice shouldn't take very long because there's not too much in it. Uh, like I said, I already gave these um, a little rinse. If you've ever um, cooked with mushrooms before, um, you know, they grow in the soil. Um, and uh, there just always seems to be soil on the mushrooms, and that's okay. Uh, as a strategy, I like to bounce them around in the strainer uh, just to, uh, you know, help loosen off any soil. But in the long run, it's best to take a napkin and just do what I'm doing now. You just wet it a little, little bit, and then that's just enough to um, wipe them clean. So uh, I was going to pause the camera, but since I'm almost done, <laughs> you can watch me do this. Um, if the soil's like really bad, uh, like this one, for example, I just can't cut it off. It's really not a big deal. But um, when I chop up my zucchini and tomato, I'll just get that at that time. I love mushrooms, any kind of mushrooms. And um, I find it fascinating. I forget this often. I don't think about it very often. But, you know, uh, when we think about the kingdoms, like the plant and tree kingdom, the mushroom kingdom, the germ kingdom, um, there's all these kingdoms. and um, Long before the plants and trees, there were mushrooms. There was the mycelium kingdom. And we are more closely related to mushrooms than we are plants and trees, is my understanding. And so I think that's just fascinating because when we think about things like herbology um, or just medicine in general, we tend to go to the plants and trees, right? But Really, like our primordial diet, if you will, had to do with uh, the mushroom kingdom, like not just our primordial diet, but our um, ways of knowing. And so um, I think mushrooms, there's a lot of um, derogatory things, like a lot of people start thinking about shrooms and partying, but for what it's worth, like the power of mushrooms is raw it's raw power and you you can um you know do shrooms and shift your perspective but if you can do it in a healing way that's what makes it really powerful but moreover um you can put things like mushrooms there's different kinds you know turkey tail and whatnot the oyster mushrooms they they're just like plants and trees they all have their own unique uh signature if you will about them and so I um, had a colleague years ago who would go mushroom hunting with her family and they would find all kinds of mushrooms, dehydrate them. And then it was like designated. Some mushrooms were designated to put in teas. Some mushrooms, if you weren't feeling well, it was designated for that. And she just uh, seemed to know like everything about mushrooms. I was really inspired. And um, I hope you are too. You know, if I had a better memory recall, I'd tell you some information that she shared with me. But um, I heard of uh, folks making um, coffee out of mushrooms and making hot chocolates out of mushrooms. And so it just seems like, I don't know about you, but I know in my family, when it comes to foraging and ways of knowing, it's just like, you know, within one generation, we've completely like lost that knowledge. Um, I could not go into the bush and survive, if you will. Um, whereas like, my dad is first generation Canadian. My mom, her family's from Canada, but um, we couldn't identify anything other than like, you know, blueberries and, and um, things like that, which is a start. But it's just, I remember being a kid. Oh, my oven's ready. I got it at 400. I remember being a kid and being excited about mushrooms. Um, it was like I saved the day, you know, mushrooms. We don't have to buy mushrooms at the grocery store. We can just get it here in the backyard. And my mom would act like everything in the backyard was poison. I used to eat dandelions and I'd always get in trouble um, because my mom naturally was scared. But um, really, if we could just go in our backyards, there's a whole like 
salad out there waiting for us, an entire cuisine. And so I'm wondering, uh, are you able to identify different plant species? And uh, what about mushrooms? What mushrooms are growing in your yard? And uh, I'm pretty sure that those psychedelic mushrooms, if we were able to identify them, at least folks like me, they're all around us. It's not just the one that has the red cap on it with the white. There's all kinds of mushrooms. Um, and like I said, if we, if somebody like myself could better identify them, then we would notice that they're, they're literally all around us. And um, anyways, I just feel excited. <laughs> so I'm going to get busy here chopping up some stuff. So I'm just chopping things up here. I got a bowl and uh, the mushrooms, I'm going to leave those whole. I love mushrooms um, just like that. I cut off those pieces that had soil on it for the um, zucchini. Um, I have a tendency of cutting the pieces too thin, so I'm intentionally going to cut them thicker today. Uh, I love zucchini. Um, growing up, that was one of the things that we always grew in the garden. Zucchini and beans, among other things like tomatoes. But we always had zucchini, so I'm looking forward to these nice big pieces. My tomato, I think I want to cut it in um, maybe like three um, halves. Just like this. <laughs> and um, now what do I want to do? Uh, I was just thinking like in Chinese restaurants, I don't know what it's called, but they slice the tomatoes nicely and then um, they look like red candy or something. And uh, I just love those and they taste uh, really good. And um, oh yeah, I got to cut up my onion. And I think I'm going to toss my tomato last. Uh, just to keep like it whole. Um, so I'm just going to um, get this out of its skin. So I'm really excited about this white onion. It smells really good as soon as I cut it open. <laughs> so um, I'm going to keep um, these pieces just nice and big. And um, the middle part of the onion, it's, you know, smaller. Um, so I, I didn't want to cut it like, you know, in half. I think this is really cute. Um, it's going to warp when I bake it, but I thought, you know what? Um, if you, I, I've never done this before, but it's crossed my mind, like, you know, to stuff um, vegetables. Um, white onions are great just on their own without cooking them. And so it might be a nice idea um, in the future to put like my rice and whatnot inside a nice little onion half like this, right? And uh, on that note, this is um, getting a bit small now. Mmm, really, really good. So now what am I gonna do? It's really easy. I'm gonna use some olive oil, put it in there. Salt pepper this up. This is Kirkland name brand, in case you're wondering. We'll probably add more salt and pepper when it comes out. <laughs> and uh, oh, yeah, I have some, uh, I have garlic. Oh, I gotta get some garlic. Hold on here. Okay, so I actually opted out of the fresh garlic uh, only because, you know what, fresh garlic takes a good 40 minutes to cook. And uh, that's not my intention right now. My intention is just to give this like a good 15, 20 minutes <laughs> and dig in. Um, but something that I like to do is I like to cook uh, or bake garlic on the side um, just for it is. And then I like to um, smother that on bread or I like to um, put it in the freezer and take it out every now and then. So anyways, I'm just going to toss this. And uh, I don't feel like it needs any more oil. I'm going to take my tomato, just uh, touch the front and back with it. 
Now I'm feeling conflicted. Should I get that fresh garlic? <laughs> Maybe I need to make like a zucchini with fresh garlic um, pasta or something like that. <laughs> so um, oh, my hands on the oily side, if you can see it. Um, just going to separate my things. So I don't really need to separate the, um, you know, zucchinis and tomatoes from each other. But I just thought um, when I go to flip over the mushrooms, um, I'll be rolling them around a little bit. There they are. And I'm excited. Um, okay, so I'm just going to give my hands a little rinse a -roo. So I've got the oven set for 400 Whoop. <laughs> and uh, these are going in. So I'm cooking just for one and I was worried there wasn't going to be enough food, right? Like I still have um, <laughs> the, you know, feta cheese and whatnot, which uh, I got to get into this feta cheese now, folks. I was just thinking about how my routines changed and whatnot. And, you know, I think we are our toughest critics, right? We are our toughest critics. Nobody seems to give a fuck except us. So, um, you know, this morning I was reflecting. I was working on Dragon Dreams book eight. Yeah, book eight, An Elephant's Anthem of Liberation. It's not on Amazon yet, but I will be sure to let you know when it is. And um, I was reading over the part about the elephant's anthem for liberation. I've only got about another hundred pages to go over and it's really powerful and it's really meaningful for me to share stuff with you. It's like total full disclosure. And uh, in my editing, I was like adding information and I'm like, why am I even sharing this? And I just feel like somebody out there needs to hear it. And maybe that's you, or maybe you know somebody, um, but there was an emphasis on authenticity and, um, you know, even though you're feeling scared to keep going and that it's worth it and that, uh, you know, when, you, when we think about the tower, you know, like in tarot cards, there's the tower and the tower crumbling down, uh, it's traumatic, but it's always a good thing um, because it, you know, everything eventually crumbles, right? It's just that we cling to it so much. And uh, this morning I was like, well, you know what? I have this thing about me. My spirit guides and I were having a conversation and I have this thing about me where I um, continuously pick up the pieces, even if I don't want to, I pick up the pieces. And this morning um, it dawned on me, like um, through my spirit guide, Toby, uh, who's represented um, by the tree of life. You can read all about Toby in the dragon dreams, but like um, he broke down and I've never seen him break down before. He's really hysterical uh, and he's really funny, um, but he can struggle with hysteria every now and then. And anyways, he helped me realize like, you know, like when you upgrade your life, when you shed those skins and you move forward hummingbird style, carrying your high quality items with you, it's kind of like starting a new school year, if you will. So there's a time and a place to have new school supplies, so to speak. So when my tower is crumbling down, yeah, I need to rebuild it. But those pieces that fell, leave them behind. Don't, don't do what I've been doing and that's working with what I have. And then he showed me this big empty space and he's like, here, like go create in this space. And, um, you know, it's nice to have new things. It's nice to have new things. So uh, metaphorically in my dream world, there's, there's this whole new playground for me. And age four, Gina, uh, she really struggles with hoarding. Um, but in a conversation today, she's like, I'm not hoarding anymore. I'm not doing that anymore. Uh, and then it was really beautiful because um, that big open space was actually created uh, from her. 
which is really special. And uh, there's just a lot to say about it, but it was it was really special. And anyways, um, my uh, rice here is ready, so the feta cheese is on hold, the tasting anyways. Uh, I want to make sure I add my butter. This is Earth Balance. Um, and uh, I like to add a lot of butter. So anyways, um, yeah, Dragon Dreams, it's like really personal for me to share. And sometimes I'm like, maybe I'm sharing too much, but it's like, well, what else do I have? What do I've got to lose? Like, you know, and uh, like I said, there's some full disclosures in Dragon Dreams. And so it's like, this is all part of the surrendering. And part of that surrendering is... Um, following my spiritual path because I'm a spiritual biz entrepreneur and uh, there's there's a lot to say but um, there's a conference I want to go to it's um, it's a month-long training in person and um, you don't have to go in person but for me um, I don't see it um, any other way I feel like this is something you need to go in person for and so uh, because I resigned as a public school teacher, I have some pension money coming to me. It's really not a lot of money, um, but it is some money. And I thought, you know what, like maybe, maybe I'll take that training. And uh, maybe that was all part of the master plan uh, behind a lot of heartache that I've experienced, um, you know, and just being honest with things like heartache. Um, it's okay to talk about your feelings. It's okay to cry. It's okay to have a bad day, but it's not okay for those feelings to rule you. And just like those pieces of the tower crumbling down, it's okay to get new building blocks. That's all part of the upgrading. And so um, the, see now I'm just going on. I, I, I mean, if I have an audience and somebody's listening, I, I really appreciate that. But um there's um, the cover of an elephant's anthem of liberation. It's um, it's like gray clouds, and there's these gray-looking Pac-Man folk on there. And um, their role, I call them the seagulls, their role is to gobble up all of my pain. And um, I, I didn't know why, but I put that as the cover. And I thought, well, maybe I should draw a picture of an elephant representing this whole, like, you know, powerful elephant's anthem of liberation. But you see, that was the subconscious mind at work because I did that. And then this morning when I was writing, I was making connections about how, like, there's these blue beings and you can read about them in Dragon Dreams. They gobble up all of my fear. So sometimes I need the blue beings more than the gray beings, uh, the, you know, or vice versa. And I've been really benefiting from this process of like feeding them my fear, um, whether it's social fear, emotional fear, financial fear, I just give it all to them. The gray beings, they help me um, process pain, like emotional pain, physical pain, social pain. And I didn't realize that metaphorically, it's like the tower was coming down and that was very um scary so the blue beings gobbled that up but i was in a lot of pain if you will and i remained in a state of pain because i kept clinging to those building blocks and then there's been this ongoing emphasis in my dream journal for years now about me eating crumbs when i need to stop eating crumbs and start feasting and then i was making the connection this morning ah you know, working with metaphors and literary devices, it's like those seagulls, the gray beings, they have been eating crumbs because I haven't been giving them the full tower. I've just been giving them the little pieces and, and um, crumbles, if you will. So this morning I was like, here's the whole entire tower, you know, take it. Just like when we shed a snake skin, we shed the whole skin. Sometimes it doesn't come off a nice clean tube, it comes out all tethered, but no matter what, we shed it all and we only carry the high quality items with us forward. And so I didn't realize just how inhibited um, I was. And so anyways, there's always lots to say. And I'm excited.
Mm. This rice turned out really good. And um, time to try that feta cheese. I'm just realizing that I've been um, not recording for I'm not sure how long. So I don't even know if you saw me taste test things. But um, it's really, really super good. Um, the feta cheese uh, went really well with the tomato. Um, and uh, if you need me to taste test it again, I'm willing to do that. So this might be a, a double timing now. Mm. It's really good. I especially like the cheese uh, with the mushrooms. Mm. And the um, and the tomato. Um, I don't know if it was caught on camera, but I took like a big bite of tomato with um everything in there it's really good mm -hmm. I just feel kind of weird tasting things in case it already got recorded <laughs> this is unscripted unedited I want to thank you so much for watching cooking with Gina cooking is something that brings me a lot of joy it's always come naturally to me and instead of being fancy, it's nice just to um, have some roasted vegetables today on top of some good old head lettuce and rice. Really good. And it tastes really fresh. And um, the tomato, it wasn't ripe. It was orange. But um, it was nice and firm that it held its form when I baked it. And... Uh, the feta cheese, like I said, it doesn't really taste like feta cheese, but it is one of the better cheeses that I've tasted. And it does have like that zing like feta cheese has, but not like to the extent that feta cheese has. So I don't know, maybe it needs like, uh, like a, like a vinaigrette kind of recipe would, would complement it, but it's really great just to have like this. And so, um, 
I got my, uh, I saved some slices of cheese right on the tomato. I feel like it would melt, but I'm just going to keep it like that. And anyways, I'm going to get down to chowing down. So thank you so much. My name is Gina Virginia Casella. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel at Gina Virginia Casella. I'd love for you to join my Facebook group, Present Moment Alchemy. Don't forget to pick up a copy of Dragon Dreams, books one to five. You can order that and get your paperback in like one to three days. It's awesome. Or if you want it right away immediately, you can get it on Kindle. So make sure you check out Amazon.ca. You just type in my name, Gina Virginia Casella, Dragon Dreams, it comes up. Or you can find the link to um, directly to that um, in the main description of um, this YouTube channel at Gina Virginia Casella or my Facebook group, Present Moment Alchemy. So I trust that if you want it, you will find it. And I can't wait to hear um, what you have to say and all the connecting. I'm a bigger picture person. So those of you who like to get in on the nitty gritty details, I'm interested in um, what kind of analysis you might have. And I'm interested in um, if any of the spirit guides and characters archetypes in my book resonate with you. Maybe you're reading about, you know, Manus, for example, and you're like, oh my God, I know Manus, but I don't call him Manus. I call him whatever you call him or, um, you know, um, I'm just very interested. And so anyways, um, thank you again. Uh, my name is Gina Virginia Casella. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel at Gina Virginia Casella. I'd love for you to join my Facebook group, um, Present Moment Alchemy. And uh, you can find my book series, Dragon Dreams, on Amazon.ca. Until next time, see ya.